Um, my name is Hjörtur and it's an old uh, Icelandic Viking name. Uh, it actually means a stag, uh, you know, the animal in the forest with the big horns. Uh, so I come from Iceland, uh, I live in Denmark at the moment and I'm an anthropologist and I work with uh, uh, place branding and, and city branding. Um, so I do a lot of travel and, and work with, with uh, destinations and, and places around the world. And I'm a big fan of history and in particular uh, the Viking voyages, where the Vikings traveled about 1,000 years ago and uh, what they were doing, what kind of lives they were living, because there's a lot of legend about the Vikings, uh, which is based on a single event uh, primarily, which is uh, uh, the sacking of a monastery in England around the year 700. So people have had this notion of Vikings being uh, uh, violent rapists and robbers, which they also were, but not only. They were so much more than just. I think that's uh, that was one of the one of the areas that I found uh, I found quite interesting is kind of the the fact that you have that you have the Vikings as as these incredible explorers. Yeah. That then are remembered because of this of the monastery story right the the, the <clears throat> more for their their violent exploration than as as farmers and, and explorers and um perhaps mercenaries in some situations or warriors but in a, in a much more traditional mercenary type of role or warrior role at, at that point in time so i in in that sense, uh, when we spoke before, you were talking to me a little bit about uh, some of the areas um, that the Vikings reached. And perhaps in, in, in my own ignorance, when, when I was exposed to the Viking myths and the Viking legends, I always imagined that the Vikings had sailed all the way down past Portugal and around through the Mediterranean and, and that they went the long way around. Hmm. Uh, versus uh, going up the the riverways and uh, maybe elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, I, I think it, it it puzzled me when I realized what the image of the Vikings were because uh, uh, I started reading the Icelandic sagas already as a kid, and I loved them. And I mean, they are written in my native language. We in Iceland we still speak the same language as the sagas were written in almost one thousand years ago. So it's easy, they are accessible to us. Uh, of course, the language has changed a little bit and, and it's, it's old fashioned, but we can pretty much understand everything. Uh, and the, the, most people have their images based on the English version of what the Vikings were. So it's what the experience was in England and that's this you know, monastery event that drives that story. Uh, the same applies to the US, you know, uh, you hear about people in America, they believe Christopher Columbus uh, discovered America in 1492. And people are disputing uh, that if the Vikings ever were there or not. And to me that's as idiotic as disputing if there's climate change or not, which is absolutely idiotic. Uh, because I've been reading the stories about how the Vikings sailed to America. And, and you know how they went to Greenland and then sailed onwards to uh, a, a new colony which they established uh, in what they, call, what they called uh, Vinland. And you read the descriptions of the places and it's obvious it's in America. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I've been to Greenland and I've seen the ruins and, and, and I know it matches. And when people uh, don't believe the sagas and what's being said there, I often take an example from the fjord where I grew up, in the best fjords of Iceland. And in one of the valleys where I used to uh, uh, herd sheep uh, in the fall, uh, there was a story of uh, uh, a Viking that came from Norway. He fled from Norway because he killed someone in Norway. And there was another guy who was sent after him to kill him because he had to uh, protect the honor of the family. And if someone was killed in a family, you would kill that man uh, in revenge. Uh, so this guy who, who fled to Iceland, uh, he was quite a warrior and he was hard to catch. And the guy uh, tried again and again to catch him and there are stories about uh, this, this battlefield in the valley uh, where they were fighting. 
and there are stories of, of how uh, uh, they tried to uh, um, attack him at his home and outside uh, the farm is this big rock with a very sharp edge and it's called Vigasti, which means killer stone. And this Viking would take those guys who were trying to come and kill him and he would break their back on the stone and kill them like that. And then finally they got him and killed him and he was buried uh, in this mound nearby the sea. This is in the 10th century, so it's more than 1000 years ago. And it's not been written down. So it's not one of the Icelandic sagas. This is a saga that's just gone on and on and on through generations in this fjord. That's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And people think oh, it's just a legend. You know, it's just one of those you know, folk stories. Uh, and in 1952, they were, they were laying the new road through the valley. And the road went right through the battlefield. And when they were laying the road and digging up, they found a Viking short. <laughs> a broken Viking sword. So it matched the, 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 the legend. In 2007, uh, um, the guy who now lives in the valley got a visit from his brother. And his brother was thinking about those stories and, and uh, where that Viking chieftain was supposed to be buried. So he asks uh, the farmer, you know, uh, have you ever checked if he's really buried there? And the farmer says, no, I haven't, but, but uh, feel free to go and check if you like. <laughs> and he came just 30 minutes later back with a bone in his hand and it turned out this was a leg of a man so they called the archaeologist and the archaeologist came and they started digging and what they found was a chieftain buried in his boat with a sword and and everything that's amazing absolutely as the story described it so everything fit and and if, if we think about uh, the viking sagas they are written yes about 150 200 years after the events took place but that's, you know, only second hand or third hand that is writing down the story. And these are important stories because uh, people didn't have TV and radio, newspapers, etc. They were telling these stories to the children, uh, uh, not only as entertainment, but also as information about uh, who had uh, 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 land properties, why were they living where they were living. Uh, it explains legal issues. It explains uh, property rights etc etc uh, it also explains um, uh, sailing routes and where you should go to and what you should look for so uh, details in those stories are in them for a good reason they're in them to explain something and because it's an important part uh, uh, of the story and <clears throat> uh, the descriptions are pretty accurate uh, when it comes to to how they sail to the west and to america and uh, in 1960s, uh, uh, archaeologists found uh, the base of uh, Leif Erikson. Uh, and Leif Erikson discovered Vinland in the year 1000. And he set up a base uh, where he could go on exploring routes. And this base is obviously not uh, a farm. They don't have farm animals. But it's, it's, it's a base where they would go on, on explorations and, and sail further in. So it's not the colony which they established. And this is on, on the, the northern edge of Newfoundland. Um, so the colony is, is, is somewhere on the mainland. New Brunswick, maybe. Uh, some say it's, it's uh, Manhattan, because the description fits uh, Manhattan Island on, on, on Hudson River. Uh, I don't know. It's impossible to... to I mean, Manhattan, <laughs> there's nothing left of, of uh, uh, the soil of Manhattan. It's, it's all been dug away. So it's impossible to, to uh, uh, find any artifacts today there. But it's, 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 uh, it's an interesting story. And actually, Leif, Leif had a brother uh, who sailed after him from Greenland, where they lived, uh, to America. And he got into a dispute with Indians. He found this fantastic place where he was going to build a farm. And he got into a dispute with the, uh, some of the natives. And he got hit by an arrow under his arm. And uh, so he was wounded. He was carried back. Uh, uh, and uh, to, to the place where they were going to build the farm, and he died there two days later. So they buried him, they put down a cross, and then they sailed back to Greenland. Which means there is still one Viking left in America. <laughs> <They plan. laughs> 
So my quest is is uh, to find that Viking one yeah. day. To track him down. To track him down. With the find arrow. Him. Yeah. And the arrow is proof, you know, if, if I find a, a skeleton, uh, you know, with, which is a, a Viking skeleton, and if there's an arrowhead as well, we got a match. Brother. I, I guess that that actually makes perfect sense if if we take a step back to yep. I, because for me one of the one of the big areas where I would always end up skeptical about some of the myths yep. if, it, if it's Homer or, or if it's the Viking sagas would be that okay well anybody that's played a game of telephone obviously has a huge issue after three people deep yeah then you know what 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 are the the characteristics then that actually lead to uh, these being you know effective and being so detail oriented, but I guess that makes perfect sense if that's how you're keeping track of uh, land ownership and yeah. navigation stories and things like that. Then the details are very very important, and they're not things that people are going to play with or or the people are in a tradition of kind of you know, of forgetting Correct. and losing. And you can see a big difference in the stories. Some stories of the Icelandic sagas are obviously written for entertainment. They may have they may be based on on true events. But they clearly are written for entertainment. So you, you can see there is a difference from one story to another. Uh, and of course, as you say, things always get skewed. You, you also get it, there's an accident somewhere and you have three witnesses and nobody tells the exact same story. So it's always a perception. And you have to take that into account. You know, I don't believe the Icelandic sires word by word. You know, and you've got extreme, of course, when you, when you, tell the stories of, of how they were fighting someone and how they would chop them down and they would jump from one rock to another which was 10 meters away. Obviously they're exaggerations. You know, there's no doubt about that. These are, these are, you know, the fist that you saw all of a sudden becomes this big. Mm. So you also have to take that into account. It's not 100% fact, but didn't did it happen in reality? Yes, I believe that. Is it exactly as described? No, it's probably skewed a little bit. But that also makes sense that then you have the, the nuance that you can play with in between the important details, right? Yes. It doesn't matter if the grass was green or if the grass was yellow green. Not, not necessarily in most situations. Yeah. But the fact Correct. that there was grass, of course, becomes very relevant. Yeah. Interesting. 